Hello and welcome back to our journey through the solar system. Today we are visiting our last dwarf planet and we saved the best for last. Well, maybe not the best, but the biggest. <laughs> so this is the dwarf planet Eris. Eris is named after the Greek goddess of discord. In fact, the name literally means strife in Greek. Now this might actually be appropriate because the dwarf planet Eris has caused a little bit of discord. The discovery of Eris was a prime catalyst for the 2006 decision by the IAU to create a new class of solar system bodies called dwarf planets, of which Pluto was one, and many people viewed this as a demotion for Pluto. Given Eris's greater mass and almost equal physical size to Pluto, there's little argument that if you want to consider Pluto a planet, then you should consider Eris a planet too. Let me just reiterate that this is not a demotion for Pluto. This is a better way of categorizing and understanding our solar system because we have more information now than we did 100 years ago. So that's all I'll say about that now. So Eris was discovered in January of 2005 based on 2003 data taken at the Palomar Observatory by a team of American astronomers led by Mike Brown. Now this name has come up a few times already with the dwarf planet. So yes, this team was actively searching for trans-Neptunian objects, so it's no surprise that they discovered quite a few of these Kuiper Belt objects. After this discovery in 2005, Eris has actually been pre-covered in data as far back as 1954. Shortly after its discovery, it was actually detected that Eris has a moon. This moon is called Dysnomia, which is the daughter of Eris in Greek mythology. And it's actually a pretty massive moon as far as these dwarf planet moons go. In fact, it's probably large enough to be spherical under its own self-gravity, so it's not just a lumpy asteroid-like moon, but it is quite small. Its radius is a little bit more than half of the radius of Pluto's largest moon, Charon. And thanks to this moon and its orbit, we can measure the mass of Eris really quite well. It's about a quarter of the mass of Earth's moons and about 1.25 times the mass of Pluto. Now, a stellar occultation back in 2010 gave astronomers information about the radius of Eris that actually re revealed that physically it's slightly smaller than Pluto. Because it's also more massive, this means that Eris is quite a bit more dense than Pluto is. This means that it's probably more rock and less ice. Eris is the only dwarf planet besides Ceres to not be located in the Kuiper Belt, arguably. So, <laughs> so beyond the Kuiper Belt, there's something called the scattered disk, and this is what Eris is a part of. However, there is some overlap between the inner edge of the scattered disk and the outer edge of the Kuiper Belt. It's not necessarily a super harsh dividing line. But Eris does seem to be part of this scattered disk. It's called scattered because the objects there were scattered off of the giant planets, mostly Neptune. And this gives them very high eccentricities and inclinations and Eris is no exception. It has a very high eccentricity over 0.4, and it's inclined 44 degrees to the ecliptic. This means that it actually gets as close as about 38 AU and as far as 97 AU from the sun during the course of its orbit. It actually gets closer to the sun than Pluto at certain times. Because it is so far out in the solar system, an Iridian year is over five and a half centuries here on Earth. It's very far out. Because of that, Eris is actually so cold that methane can condense out of its atmosphere very uniformly. This means that the entire surface is likely covered with a very thin, like millimeter thick layer of frozen methane, meaning that it doesn't have those big variations like Pluto has in its surface um, because all of it is covered in the very reflective methane. This means that unlike Pluto and Makemake that appear rather reddish in their color index, Eris is actually quite white and it's very reflective. Eris is so far away that it would probably take over 25 years for a spacecraft to reach it, not helped by the fact that Eris just passed its aphelion, that is the furthest point in its orbit, back in 1977, so it's still about over 90 AU away from the sun. It would be a great target, but I'm not expecting an in-situ Eris mission anytime soon. However, it has been identified as a science target of interest for the James Webb Space Telescope, so we might get some really exciting new data from that when it launches. Looking forward to that. So the most massive dwarf planet and the furthest one out that we know of, Eris really upended our understanding of the solar system, or at least it was the straw that broke the camel's back in that regard. It is a very cool, literally, <laughs> it's cold, <laughs> piece of the puzzle of our solar system. So thank you for journeying with me to Eris, the last of the dwarf planets today, but don't worry, we are not done with solar system bodies quite yet. <laughs> we have some more to talk about and we'll be going on to the moons next time. So I hope you come back and join us for that. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.